Hello Java developers, my name is Matt Rabel. Today I'd like to show you how to build a secure REST API and native image with Spring Boot. Let's giddy up. I created a demo script for this screencast, which you can find in the Octodev native Java examples repository, and it's demo-springboot.adoc a doc for ASCII doc. And like I said, we're going to build a simple REST API, secure it with OAuth 2, and then access it with a JWT. And all the links for the demo script and for the repository with the completed code and instructions for doing it all are in the description below in the video. So go ahead and check that out and click on those links. So you'll need a few prerequisites. You'll need SDK man. I already have it installed. So uh, oh, it's it's not dash dash, right? Use the version. SDKman.io is where you can get it. And then HTTPy, I already have that installed as well. And then the Okta CLI, which I have 0 0.10. And you can get that from cli.okta.com. And then the brackets at the end of the steps might be IntelliJ Live templates that I could use. So if I type a bit of code and it spits out a bunch of code, then you'll know where that came from. And so we're going to start with uh, SDK man here to install Java 17 with Graal VM. I already have it installed. So you could also do SDK list Java and grep girl for the Graal images that are available for your machine. And then you'll want to generate an OAuth 2 access token. This will be the JWT that it will use to access the REST API. So Okta apps create spa OIDC debugger. And it's at oidcdebugger.com slash debug. And then we can go ahead and go to the OIDC debugger website. And we'll go ahead and make this a bit bigger. And you'll see it's got our client ID, which we'll need right here. And it remembered my authorized URI from the last time I was here. And you'll just need to use the issuer and tack on that v1 authorize. And then down here in the token, make sure have v1 authorize there as well and then code and use pixie proof key for code exchange and you should be off to the races and then you'll get this access token here which you can copy and put in your terminal so token equals and now we're all set up there and we can put this back over here and now we'll create a spring boot java rest api this will use start.spring.io and i'll go ahead and do this in a downloads directory and use httpy to hit that endpoint and we're going to include web, OAuth 2 resource server, and native. And then expand it, and here we are. So now we can open up Spring Boot in IntelliJ. And the first thing you're going to want to do is modify the pom.xml to basically uh, use a different version of Tomcat that's a bit more optimized. So find that starter web, replace it with this. So it excludes the uh, embed core and embed WebSocket and uses embed programmatic instead. I don't know if that'll always be the case, if it'll need it in a future version, but that's, you know, 267 right now. And then hello controller. We'll go ahead and create that. Hello controller. And then we have a shortcut. SB hello there. And then this, you might want to click to refresh everything. It should be, you know, pulling in spring just fine. There we go. And now our imports are resolved. So you can see, you know, just long package names, but not much code, right? Only you know, 15 lines or so here. And then we can configure in application.properties for the OAuth2 uh, resource server or issuer. So that's our issuer URI. And then we'll need to get our Okta domain name, which we had back here. Grab it right there. Replace that placeholder. And then we'll also need to add security configuration. So we can just do this under this main package and we'll call it security configuration. And this basically, you know, enables web security, extends web security configure adapter. It doesn't like that I uh, deleted the package there. Package com octa rest. And now it should all compile. And so it just makes you basically send a JWT in for any request. It requires all requests be authenticated. And so now we can start this up with uh, MVNW spring boot run. Oh, we got to change the permissions. I don't know when they start doing that, but uh, it is didn't always happen. 
then you can see it starts in 1200 milliseconds there so pretty fast and then if we want to make sure it's secured we can hit hello and it'll reply with a whole bunch of security headers so that's a nice thing about spring security and the good old 401 and now if we wanted to hit it with that token we can recall that and then use HTTPIA with a bearer token and it prints out you know my name so this Hogolo controller is resolving my email to the get name there and then we can also build a native app so we'll want to exit out of here and stop this one sometimes it takes a couple control C's and VNW package dash P native you can see that took a little over two minutes to run there two minutes 13 seconds and then we can start it up with target demo and it starts up in what 46 milliseconds there a couple control C's 36 milliseconds so we're getting better right and uh, yeah 36 milliseconds so that's about the average and then if you wanted to compare it with you know other frameworks I did uh, this where I basically ran each one three times and then I ran them five times and I took the average of that so this is on a MacBook Pro Intel from 2019 64 gigs of RAM right most of the startup time is related to disk speed but build time is certainly you know determined by RAM and CPU so Spring Boot basically uh, takes around 60 milliseconds to load up Micronaut about half the speed and then 25% faster than Micronaut is Quarkus and then Heladon's a bit faster than Spring Boot as well and so you can see the average is there and then the memory usage I think is interesting so Spring Boot uh, takes about 50 megabytes of memory so that's a lot better than typical Java app right after it's created into a binary and then 61 megabytes after the first request and only increases by a megabyte after five requests you know the others uh, use a bit less memory but you know in the end they're all kind of similar except for Quarkus here is pretty good on memory and then what about the M1 Max that's what I'm recording this on so milliseconds to start there spring boot 36 right so that's pretty awesome the others are a bit faster but they're rewriting spring framework 6 to be all native and ahead of time compiling and get rid of some reflections so I wouldn't be surprised if they, this gets a lot faster but the interesting thing for you as a developer is that you know the builds are much faster like almost twice as fast the apps start up twice as fast but they do use more memory on the M1 so not sure why that is but you can create a secure Spring Boot app with Okta using the Okta CLI so we've actually integrated these commands into it so just to show you what that looks like if we were to go to you know downloads I already have that one so take temp clear that out and then Okta start spring boot it'll actually download and configure an Okta spring boot app for you and you know you can just start it up log in and it all works so that's pretty slick and we also have a Webflux branch that's the one that has native built in so the regular spring boot I didn't bother to put native in there but the Webflux one does and then of course you can find the code that I just created in this native Java examples spring boot and if you're to go to the repo it'll point to the blog post where I compare them all I hope you've enjoyed this screencast you can find me at mrabel on Twitter if you want to see when I post new videos or blog posts and of course my team is at octadev on Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can be notified when we produce and publish more content like this cheers have a great day.